Hello everyone. Welcome to another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I'm Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. In this week number seven, we are already underway into learning algorithms that are expected to drive systems such as what we see in our background and orbiting spacecraft around the Earth. So uh, what we were doing until this last time um, is to look at uh, first the matched uncertainty case that is when the parameter was in fact matched with the adaptive controller and we actually learned how to use a backstepping based uh, Lyapunov design to uh, construct a control and an update law and therefore an adaptive controller for such a system right and we also of course just this stability analysis we also looked at a little bit of uh, how to talk about uh, you know persistence right so so basically we did all that for the matched case and then we moved on to the uh, case of parameter unmatched with the control right and uh, the first again looked at the known parameter case in order to understand how the backstepping design will work um, so we got a fair idea of how the control would be yeah so so basically um, we we just started doing this right so for the known parameter case uh, we in fact first looked at the model right where we have the uh, parameter now in the first state instead of the second where the control appears right and the aim is the same which is basically to drive x1 and x2 to zero right so uh, again slightly different because we're not looking at the tracking error problem but as i said last time itself this is exactly the same yeah even if i was considering a tracking error problem the um, methods that we're using would apply almost identically right so great uh, so in order to ensure x1 to go to zero we designed a controller yeah assuming that x2 is the control for the x1 state this is again standard in the backstepping based method and since the parameter is known i can apply this kind of a control to get this nice ideal system and we also choose this nice v1 right now uh, because we know that x2 is not identically equal to x2 desired we uh, try to do the next best thing that is drive x2 to x2 desired and this is where we get the motivation for choosing the second piece of our uh, lyapunov function or lyapunov candidate function and that is the error between x2 and x2 desired and a quadratic constructed out of it all right and now we know very well that uh, v2 dot turns out to be of this structure right and if we choose u to be x2 desired dot minus k to x2 minus x2 desired right so then i know that this gets cancelled out and i get a nice negative term so i get basically v2 dot as minus k to x2 minus x2 desired whole square all right so so this is where we were and we're going to start uh, from here so I'm going to mark our lecture as lecture 7.3, starting this point. All right. So as always, just like before we did in backstepping, we just add up the two pieces to get a, a candidate Lyapunov function for the consolidated x1, x2 system. All right. Um, and we actually start taking the derivatives carefully. Right. So the x1 uh, v1 was just x1 squared by 2 so v1 dot is x1 x1 dot and v2 dot by virtue of this analysis yeah is just minus k2 x2 minus x2 desired squared all right great uh, now we plug in for x1 dot of course yeah so what does it turn out to be um x1 dot is x2 plus theta f x1 so i get x1 x2 plus x1 theta f x1 yeah uh, and now we also know that, uh, of course, we want to write x2 in terms of this variable, right? And that's what we do, right? So that's what we do. Uh, so what is this? So basically, I have, um, I mean, 
we just write <laughs> um, let me look at this carefully if this is done correctly or not all right so if we go back and look um, in fact I'm going to reproduce the expression right here so x2 desired was defined to be minus k1 x1 right uh, plus well I believe minus theta fx1 right okay so in fact the way this manipulation is done it's fine that's okay so so what we do is uh, if I, I actually don't write um, x2 as this but I simply replace uh, theta fx1 from here yeah so if I do that theta f x1 is actually equal to minus k1 x1 plus x2 design so this uh, will actually be a plus sign right this will actually be a plus sign let's see if i got this correct so just a second let me go back and check Right, so x2 desired is minus k1 x1 minus theta fx1. All right, and if I go here, which is what I wrote here, x2 desired is minus k1 x1 minus theta times fx1. So if I replace for theta times fx1 from here, I get minus k1 x1. Yeah, I made a mistake. This should be minus k1 x1 minus minus x2 z. Yeah, this is what I was sort of looking for, and this is correct. Yeah, this is correct. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. All right. So now, if you combine, so so this term is of course nice. It's minus k1 x1 squared, and if I combine these two terms, yeah, I get x1 times x2 minus x2 z all right all right so so essentially there is a step that's missing here so i'm going to write it so this is actually equal to minus k1 x1 squared minus k2 x2 minus x2 desired squared plus x1 times x2 minus x2 desired all right this is very similar to what we had in the previous backstepping also okay this is very similar because you have a nice two you have nice two negative terms and then one mixed term this is very standard in what happens in backstepping type analysis yeah if you go back i'm going to try to actually demonstrate that similarity right if you see i had minus k1 un squared minus k2 psi 2 squared which is the backstepping error variable and then i had a mixed term in the e1 and a backstepping error variable so if you look at this, I have the exact same scenario here. I have one term in minus k1 x1 squared, another term in the backstepping error variable quadratic, and a third mixed term in the x1 and the backstepping error variable. All right, so this is exactly what you tend to get. And from this point, you know that I can do, uh, I can simply do what is called sum of squares which just involves uh, using the inequality that uh, this guy, I will write it once more, is less than or equal to half x1 squared plus half x2 minus x2 desired squared. All right, so once I use this inequality here, which is essentially the sum of squared process, why is it called the sum of squared process? Because we are writing these mixed terms a b type terms in terms of squares a square and b square because those are the terms we have here and so once you combine these you get exactly this expression which is again very similar to what you had even in the matched case so with this backstepping type procedure you are getting almost a, a rather similar um, you know a v dot as the matched case also yeah so this is why uh backstepping is a rather universal uh you know um, method of control design that can be um, 
used in many different contexts all right so anyway so uh, so with this you know that if i choose k1 and k2 to be greater than half then i have v dot negative definite then of course which immediately helps me to apply this Lyapunov theorem which immediately proves that x1 goes to zero and x2 goes to x2 desired so essentially you have i mean all round a global uniform asymptotic stability i mean you have all essentially the best property that you can look for all right so great yeah so in, in fact in fact if you look at it very carefully you can even uh, conclude uh, global exponential stability yeah if you so desire yeah you can even conclude global exponential stability because you can see that it is the same order and all that but but since we are dealing with nonlinear systems, mostly we don't really mention this because yeah, more often than not, this is not possible to achieve. Yeah. So anyway, so now what do we know? We have started off looking for x1 to go to zero and x2 to also go to zero. So this always remains a question. Did the construction of the backstepping error variable actually mess with our um, tracking or, or the stabilization control objective? Yeah. In this case, also the answer is no under certain assumptions. Okay, so what are those? So x1 goes to zero is obvious, x2 goes to x2 desired, and x2 desired was this quantity. Right now, what do I know? I know that this is going to zero, right? So if x2 desired is going to zero, right? So, so if I want x2 desired to go to zero because I want x2 to go to zero, so this will happen only if x2 desired is going to zero, right? So I want this to happen okay and so we sort of make uh, this sort of an assumption right i mean you can think of it as an assumption right this is an assumption yeah, because eventually yeah this is something beyond the system data and right? this is an assumption uh, and if we do have such an assumption that f at zero state is zero then you have that x2 goes to zero and we are done all right now one might uh, be tempted to argue about the reasonableness of this assumption okay. now uh, why one would say that this assumption is in fact reasonable um, well at least reasonable is that if uh, you have uh, you know if you're looking for equilibrium if you're looking for x1 and x2 equal to zero to be the equilibrium of the system so you, how do you find the equilibrium typically you will assign the control to be zero and you will try to find the right hand where the right hand sides are zero so with the control zero this is anyway zero but if i want this guy to be zero and i want x2 to also be zero because i want x1 x2 equal to origin that is zero zero to be an equilibrium of the system then if this guy is zero then this guy also has to be zero and theta is some of course constant non-positive uh, sorry uh, constant non-zero unknown Right. So, so constant and non-zero. If it's zero, then there is nothing to do here. Okay. So if x2 is zero or x2 is x2 equal to zero is an equilibrium, and then this also has to be zero at x1 equal to zero. And right. otherwise x1 equal to zero is not an equilibrium solution. Okay, if fx if f0 is not equal to zero, and yeah, so if so the point is that we are trying to make is if f0 equal to not equal to 0 then x1 x2 0 0 not an equilibrium okay so and remember that we are always trying to analyze stability of an equilibrium it doesn't make any sense if we are trying to analyze the stability of a point which is not the equilibrium so therefore if we are interested in going to a point zero zero then it has to be an, it better be an equilibrium of the system and so f0 equal to zero is a very reasonable assumption to ensure that x1 x2 equal to zero zero is in fact an equilibrium of the system all right so this is a fairly reasonable assumption no problem yeah and so we've been able to prove for the known case with this kind of a control law right so now one of the question that also arises is what does this control law look like because you know there is an x2d dot 
right? So you essentially have to take a derivative here, right? So it's uh, use this expression, take a derivative, right? So this is minus k1 x1 dot, which is minus k1 x2. And this is minus theta f dot, which is partial of f with respect to x1, x1 dot. Oh, sorry. I should just say. So there is x1 in both. So this is like minus k1 minus theta partial of f with respect to x1 times x1 dot. All right. So this is essentially the uh, control. And if you want to substitute this, you can, of course, substitute for this x1 dot as x2 plus theta fx1. Yeah, so this is a very uh, implementable control. So this is minus, of course, k2 x2 minus x2 design. Okay, so that's that's all for us then. So x1 dot is just this. Yeah, so this is a very implementable controller, of course, no problem. Yeah, it's just a function of the steps. Yeah, no issues. All right, but of course you notice that it contains the parameter, right? Which is again something that you expect. Okay. In fact, x2 desired also contains the parameter. So the parameter appears here, right? So the parameter is it's complicated. Yeah. The parameter appears here. The parameter appears here, right? And the parameter also appears here. Yeah. So unlike the matched case where the parameter appeared in only one place, here the parameter seems to appear in a lot of different locations. Yeah. And this is what uh, you will see subsequently complicates the adaptive controller design. Okay. So so we'll sort of start going into the adaptive control design for this same system now. So what happens in the unknown parameter case? So of course in the unknown parameter case as you can see, I cannot have an X2 desired. I mean, because I think of X2 as a control, right? So I cannot have X2 desired with the theta, right? Because, well, I don't know theta. So there's no question of implementing a theta. So therefore, the first step is, again, standard certainty equivalence, right? Because we're just looking at the first system, right? So the first system is X1 dot is X2 plus theta fx1 with this as some what one would call pseudo control okay so x2 desired is with a theta hat yeah, which is basically an estimate of theta with fx1 and then of course you have the nice negative term so when f when x2 is in fact x2 desired you will get x1 dot is minus k x1 k1 x1 but and now with an additional theta tilde data right so this is unusual you already start getting a theta tilde here in the first piece itself okay, and this is where things start getting complicated and now what do we do earlier we took v1 as one half x1 square but now that is not sufficient right because now i have a new state so what do i do i do what i do stand typically in adaptive control I add a quadratic term corresponding to the parameter error. Yeah. And now I use that to construct an update law. Right. So what do I get? I get here x1, x1 dot and 1 over gamma theta tilde theta hat dot. Right. And now I plug in for x1 dot, which is this, and then retain this term as it is. Now I know that this theta tilde terms can be combined nicely. Right. And if I choose theta hat dot to be this, yeah, which is essentially canceling this term out, which is the best I can do. We've already discussed this several times before. Then we are left with v1 dot is minus k1 x1 square, which is negative semi-definite. Right? Right? Again, try to remember the difference from the matched case. In the matched case, when we took the v1 dot, in the ideal circumstance, this is the ideal circumstance because x2 is assumed to be exactly x2 desired. So even in the ideal circumstance, v1 dot is coming out to be only negative semi-definite. Whereas in the earlier version, in the matched case, v1 dot came out to be negative definite. Expression was exactly the same, but there was no theta tilde state. Therefore, the v1 dot was coming out to be exactly 
negative definite in the uh, matched case. So that's what I will actually make a comment on. Negative definite in the matched case. Yeah. So again, things are more complicated in the unmatched case, right? So now what we of course know that x2 is not identically equal to x2 desired. So we do the best we can. We try to have x2 track x2 desired. And for that, we introduce a quadratic term in the backstepping error. Yeah, so we are trying to drive the backstepping error to zero. So obviously we introduce a quadratic term in the backstepping error in the form of v2. Right. And this is again the same. Right. And now what we would want to do is right. So in fact, I would say want to choose. What we would say is we want to choose the x2 dot, which is the control, to be just again the same as before, which is cancelling these guys out. Okay. But now remember that x2 desired contains the theta hat, right? Another state, no longer the theta, which is a constant, and the derivative of the constant being zero. Yeah. So when I take the derivative of x2 desired, that is, I, I compute x2 desired for its implementation, what is it that I will get? I will get uh, this minus k1 x1 dot, which is fine. Yeah. Then I get uh, this term is actually, write it down. This term is minus uh, theta hat dot f x1. All right, this term is minus theta hat dot fx1. And if I plug in this theta hat dot here, this is what you get. Okay, this term is just minus theta hat dot times fx1. All right. And then the next term is just, I mean, because we are doing a, uh, the product rule for the differentiation, right? So you have theta hat dot fx1 and theta hat f dot x1. Okay. And, and you know what happens is that, I mean, I, of course, plug in for the x1 dot. I keep the theta hat f dot x1 as it is, right? But notice that theta hat f dot x1 is also theta hat partial with respect to x1 times x1 dot. So not just an x1 dot here, but also an x1 dot from here, okay? So that's what is written here so this actually becomes I mean, we don't need this step this actually becomes uh, k1 plus theta hat del f del x1 x1 dot in fact this is what we had even uh, here in the control law minus k1 minus theta del f del x1 so this theta gets replaced by theta hat x1 dot yeah so that's the same right so that's what you have here and you have minus gamma x1 f squared x1 which is just coming from this term, the derivative of the estimate. Yeah, great. Um, now you of course substitute for x1 dot also because we want to write the whole thing, right? We want to write the whole expression, right? Excellent, excellent. So, uh, so what we are sort of trying to um, uh, understand is that whether the control is implementable or not. All right, and this is where things start to get wiry in this case, in the adaptive case. If you notice this x2 desired is of course implementable. That's how we chose it, right? I mean, we we introduced the uh, theta hat in x2 desired just so that it is implementable. Right? Typically we assume all the states are known and theta is unknown, but then because theta is unknown, we introduce a theta hat here. So therefore x2 desired is implementable, right? So, uh, so in this control, x2 minus x2 desired is of course implementable, but there is a problem with x2 desired dot. Right? Why? Why is there a problem? Because if you note, when we took the derivative carefully, we came to this step, everything is implementable, but then we reintroduce the theta. How did we reintroduce the theta, which was an unknown? 
because of x1 dot okay. because the derivative of x1 shows up in the control law because of this therefore we reintroduce the unknown okay so this is where uh, we sort of uh, start to have an issue with the implementation of the controller so that's what i will say so um, in fact i'm going to highlight this So, due to this, control U is not implemented. All right, the control U is not implementable because of this theta. Okay, so uh, that is what we say contains the theta dot which is unknown all right so that's what we want to do now we want to figure out what we need to do and we need to figure out what we need to do uh, we of course do the sort of obvious thing yeah instead of uh, having a theta we replace it with a new estimate theta uh, mu hat okay so because there is an unknown here every time we get an unknown that's what we do in certainty equivalence. We replace it with the estimate. But the problem is, uh, the key problem to remember is that, so replace with estimate is the usual solution. Is the usual solution via the certainty equivalence principle. All right. But uh, we cannot use theta hat since uh, theta hat dot already specified yeah since theta hat dot is already specified yeah because theta hat dot is already specified uh, when you do the Lyapunov analysis with this theta tilde squared this guy yeah it will only cancel this one term it will not cancel the theta tilde term that you get because of this change in the control. Yeah, this term will not get cancelled. Okay, and of course, you also want this term to be cancelled because I mean, in the ideal circumstance, this term goes away, but in the adaptive circumstance, that's how we cancel this theta tilde terms or the, the parameter error terms is by introducing a Lyapunov function and using the update law uh, for the theta hat dot. In order to cancel this term now if we are unable to cancel the term corresponding to this we'll be left with a, a neg non negative definite term in the lyapunov function derivative and that's a problem and therefore uh, we need to introduce a new uh, estimate new hat yeah so for the same quantity yeah for the same quantity we have a new estimate and that's what we do so this mu hat is what replaces theta hat, theta. And we, of course, construct an appropriate Lyapunov function. And we will look at the Lyapunov function construction and the subsequent analysis in the upcoming session. All right, great. So what is it that we uh, looked at today? Um, we sort of are continuing our analysis of this unmatched case, which as we can see is turning out to be much more involved than the matched case. We, we saw, uh, you know, what the differences are. We saw that the X2 desired starts to contain the unknown parameter. Yeah. And as, as we go into the adaptive case, where of course theta is assumed to be unknown, uh, we land in some trouble in terms of how to uh, define the <clears throat> update loss. And then we, in the end, we come to a situation where the control, uh, which has this x2 desired dot, also contains uh, the theta again. So the theta seems to reappear. And then we uh, are looking for a way to deal with this. So we introduce a new uh, estimate for this theta into the analysis. So essentially, uh, the only way we are able to resolve this issue at this stage 
is by having uh, two estimates for the same unknown parameter theta. Okay, so this is very standard in adaptive control, by the way, in a lot of scenarios. We do what is called as over parameterization. All right, so we will talk about this and how uh, this unmatched state um, backstepping adaptive control will happen in the subsequent sessions. All right, okay, see you folks again. Thank you.